this this calculations. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a little convoluted. It's a little Joker in the Dark Knight kind of. He planned this much. Okay. Okay. Joker movie. stuff though. There there's a, there's a thing where I I can see if like if you want a five hour movie, I get it. This one it requires a lot of assumption on the part of the per, of the people from Aiden Gill. <laughs> like, yes, I would say so, a, a five hour TV series of twelve rounds would be a little too much. No, it would be, but like, but I, I don't. There's not like an inner logic to that. We're like Dark Knight. There's an inner logic to it. You, just, you don't need to see everything to see him setting up bombs. Like he set up bombs. I get it. Like this is like he has to like think four steps ahead of like what people are going to consider doing. It just doesn't add up at all. Yes, but I, 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 I liked when the bomb's about to go off. Uh, Hank says to the other guy, like, whatever the plan is, looks like you're not part of it. Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> What's that little bit at the end for? Slash, that, that's his last line in life. <laughs> uh, but and then that, that, there's a callback to that later on when they're on the helicopter and Molly's like, oh, you yes, landed. Oh, that too. Bitch. You landed. Bitch. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Where is this coming from? <laughs> like, the, like, Hank is... His last, he's dead. His last line in death is bitch. <laughs> like, <what>? And nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> uh, that, so. That's no Jeff Daniels. Like, Jeff Daniels has one of the best death scenes of all time because he just sits there, like, sad and defeated on his face while the bomb goes off. And it's like, oh, that's so terrible. <laughs> he, doesn't have, he doesn't even have anything to say. It's just like, oh, no. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like, Hank's like, bitch. <laughs> Uh, so, so John Cena hears this on the phone. Well, he then gets he hears it, he hears that this is happening. That then George kind of shows up and says, "Oh yeah, sorry, there's an explosion. No way the Hank could have survived." Upset a little bit. Phone call from Miles. In exactly 17 minutes, it'll be exactly a year from when Emily, uh, sorry, Erica, was killed to the second, I assume. So he's got 17 minutes to then to find Molly, and he says that she's where Erica is now. So they assume graveyard. That turns out to just be a lie. I, <laughs> I, I like how like they were really ex- they were really like we solved this puzzle. Graveyard. Where else would she be? It's wh- <laughs> as if like they had to consider so many options. And graveyard was like, you're a genius. She stood I would have never thought of graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> she was cremated. She could be anywhere. Uh, uh, so that, that, so she must be in the graveyard. But then seconds later, or, and Molly has the bomb on her chest with a thumbprint that only Danny can deactivate. And then, like, a minute later, they reiterate, I've got 70 minutes to get there. I'm the only person who can deactivate it. It's like, okay, we we are watching this film. Film. Like, we, we know. Okay. <laughs> okay have, give us some credit, please. Uh, so they're driving along. Uh, George sends Ray to go and oh, they also work out. This has all been like a big lie. This has all been. Uh, uh, Miles has it's been. Just try, he's trying to steal City Hall this whole time. Uh, he's just trying to get a bunch of of money that's off the back, off the books because they had to evacuate a lot of buildings and they shut down power, which brings in people to take the money away. It's just a whole whole convoluted thing of he's trying to get money out. He's using the fire engine to take the money out of the fire truck. Uh, which they, yeah, they have, <laughs> there's a lot of effort. <laughs> that's, that's I, I, I loved effort. his method of stealing the money, which was that the, the fire truck has been emptied. He he poses as Willie, the, the guard who moonlights as his security guard elsewhere, so that's why he had to die, so he wouldn't show up for his job. Aiden Gillen goes in, takes the money, which is a hundred million dollars, I think he said, washes it, puts it in water, like, soaks it, and then sucks it up through the hose of the fire engine. I want to try this. I don't think it would work. It's just <laughs> sucking up wet money. Uh, something about I reckon something's gonna get stuck somewhere along the way. <laughs> I just I don't have a lot of faith in that that being successful, but hey, it seems this, to work. In this the whole film. this whole play. I mean, we're already talking about how convoluted this thing is and how many. But it's like that has to be so much effort for one man to like pull. Like he's already he broke so out of prison. Money. What like a week ago? Maybe like it wasn't. It was not like. But somehow he's gone all over New Orleans and he set up like security deposit boxes, <laughs> which is not some simple thing to do, let alone two uh, bombs, which I guess he's an expert at. So okay, elevators, paintings with things on the back of them that won't be like you know revealed until they need to be. 
other bombs. Like <laughs> so much, so much needed to happen. Research for all these like Willie and like his day job and his night, like all this stuff that he has to do. And like, the security <laughs> this boxes, one scenario. They're clearly his security boxes, but he didn't provide a key. So they have to, <laughs> they have to like get the bomb squad in to cut one open and mm-hmm. crowbar them out of the bank. And ugh, <laughs> it's not making it easy for anyone. <laughs> He's just really good at this, though, apparently. <laughs> so uh, so they, re- they realize halfway through, oh, no, wait, he's doing this, such and such. So Ray goes off to do that, whilst George and, and Danny keep going to find Molly. And then John Cena has another revelation that, oh, no, wait, hang on. Molly's been with, is with Miles Jackson. So, and that's where the robbery's taking place. So they just turn around <laughs> and head there as well. It would have been so much easier just to all head there together, I think, to make that realization in one, one moment. And just turn the car around and go there. I should note, um, by the way, I wrote this down. I didn't want to forget it. Uh, Randy Harlan. This is 2009. Randy Harlan. Who? What does he? What did he do before this? Mindhunters. Uh, this is things? after he did. He did Mindhunters in 2004, which we've done. Exorcist: The Beginning, The Covenant, and Cleaner. Oh God, the cov- the Covenant is uh, horrendous. I, I, yeah, I haven't uh, seen. I've seen Mindhunters, uh, but I haven't seen any of the, those other ones. The Exorcist, I almost considered doing also because it has uh, some hilarious moments in it, but I didn't want to also watch it again. So, thank you. Yeah. Although Stellan uh, Skarsgård's in that one, so uh, he's he's in he's in both. Can't be because uh, because Paul because Paul Schrader was like, I'm gonna make an Exorcist prequel, and Warner Brothers was like, Yeah, we don't like this. Why don't Why don't you leave, Stellan? You stay, and we'll shoot the entire movie again differently with Rennie Harlan. <laughs> Ah, oh, see, I'm looking at the cast of this. You've got David Bradley, Alan Ford, James Darcy. Alan Ford. That no, Alan Ford has like one of the best moments in that movie. That's that's the that's like the sole reason I'd want to talk about it. But the movie's also again horrendous, so it's not exactly worth uh, spending that much time on. Okay, uh, <laughs> I will remain but intrigued. Gonna, but but what I was going to say, this is like 2000 Rennie Harlan. Uh, his action film specifically, this one specifically, because like Mindhunters. It's clearly trying to be like a Fincher thing. It's trying to be like Seven um, in its own way and it, how it's handled. This one feels like a Tony Scott movie, like the way it's directed. Like yeah. there's a lot of like there's a lot of like uh, camera choices that really re- resemble like <laughs> the his, camera is his, never like, still. It's never still, and there's a lot of like transitions and like cranked up shots and stuff. It's really good for like this man on fire effect. Seems like what he's going for, which like, maybe it's just like the Fox. It's a Fox movie. Maybe it's the Fox House style at that point. And we have the state uh, was Tony Scott, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, and that, that was like the yeah. enemy of the state and like the fan are like the beginning of him being like, what if I did other things with the camera besides just shoot people? <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> yeah, this felt very enemy of the state to me. Uh, so good. Yeah, enemy of the state, man on fire. Like it's in that realm of Tony Scott for sure. Like that's what 12 rounds seems to be like echoing from a cinematic standpoint. Yeah. And you mentioned the like the real complicated plan for, for, for uh, Aiden Gillen. Uh-huh. And that is a Rennie Harden staple as well. Like oh, go, of course. going back to Mindhunters, which I know you're not a fan of Mindhunters, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't hate it. it <laughs> it's not hor- it's not horrendous like those other movies that we've already mentioned. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's it's like. <laughs> but just there's there's a scene in that where in the space of a couple of hours, one character had to do so much work, including mm-hmm. draining somebody of all their blood and writing a room full of numbers while setting up this whole convoluted plan uh, in a very short I- time. I guess I just like with Mindhunters, that's another example of me being fascinated by the career of accents that Johnny Lee Miller has had. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is an English guy in that film. It is not him. <laughs> another character got to be English, so he had to do. Yeah, he has to play. He has to play Southern. He has to play <laughs> Lucas Black in that film. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen to our Mindhunters episode. We had a fun time. Uh, that's, that's that is a fun film with some wonderful deaths. In, in it, I agree. it does have good death. There's other things that detract for me, but it does have good deaths in that movie. And I Mel agree. Gilmer in his hair, and it has LL Cool J dodging, d- d- not touching the lava, which is <laughs> that's, that's a, that's great, great scene. Bit. Like shooting uh, hand holes in a wall to rock climb across it is that's good stuff. That's good stuff. It's novel. Ladies uh, love Cool James. Indeed, me... they do. No one has yet to dispute this. So, yes. uh, so uh, they find Molly. Kind of, she's in a helicopter. She she can fly a helicopter. You can fly a helicopter. Yeah, I, I was. I wrote that down because I'm like, did we? Did, was that an established thing no. at the beginning of the movie? No. Did you, never. Did she say like, honey, I gotta go to work. <laughs> flying helicopters. Not a single second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And now I'm thinking, wait, so did it, so Angela must have knew that too, yep. right? He was like, he was all in on this because like, well, his girlfriend flies helicopters, the perfect escape for me because cars didn't work last time. I, I like <laughs> to think that a year ago she didn't fly a helicopter, and then from prison he sent her a leaflet. Like, hey, learn to fly a helicopter. <laughs> better, Born in the day job, idea. learn to fly. He, like, subtly sent pamphlets in the mail to get her to be encouraged to fly, start Maybe flying helicopters. That's like a, a $50 off your first lesson. Kind of thing. So a year later, after she's like, after it's like she, I gave up Pilates because I got this leaf about flying helicopters. A year later, she's a captain. <laughs> she's flying helicopters. Yeah, why not? And so he, um, he's using her best. to fly we away. Need a, need a, in a prequel comic series 12 rounds to explain this. <laughs> uh, so Aiden Killen's using her to fly away. She delays everything enough for John Cena to find her and uh, leap off the roof and grab the helicopter. John Cena does not have the physique of a man who I think can <laughs> leap off the roof and grab a helicopter. Wait, I believe... <laughs> back, back, up a, back up a step. It's because him and Steve Harris are driving, in the, they're driving up to it. And the, the reason she's stalling is because she sees an anonymous car, you know, <laughs> 50 floors down on the road and she sees two guys run into a building. It's like, I guess that's probably my husband in the FBI. Guy. I, need to <laughs> I mean, it there. might, it could be any of these cars. He could be already up there. Just... It could be anything at all. But I, I mean, I guess my, my, my helicopter approved vision was able to detect that those are the two people running into the building right now. So I better stall. Oh, so, but, hey, it worked. Uh, so that's the main thing. So he managed to grab okay, one. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, John Cena j- dives through the air. Yep. I mean, I mean, I know M- Mark has done in the past. He's done articles uh, looking at the most unbelievable jumps in history. Uh, I like think the Matthew McConaughey jump from Reign of Fire is still reigns supreme. Oh, definitely. Uh, oh my god, he jumps. He jumps like <laughs> he jumps like half a football field before he like finally gets to that dragon. <laughs> and, and it's all in a, in a perfect straight line. It's all like horizontal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's got a jet, he's like Iron Man basically. And of course, I need the, to find uh, this article. That sounds like a fascinating article. The, the Dwayne Johnson jump from Skyscraper, I think, was the one that inspired it uh, off of the green. Oh, easily. Yeah, I, I'm sure it did. Yes. Uh, so this this would rank. This isn't as far, but it's just the the build of John Cena makes it very yeah. unbelievable. I yes. Uh, just given he how, how much like, he's run in the past, he would sink like hours. a rock. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but he manages on there, and then we get a very uh, a, a climax reminiscent of Cliffhanger. Of a a physical specimen being nearly bested <laughs> by somebody who is not one on a helicopter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so where, where Stallone somehow was being defeated by John Lithgow, here John Cena is being being beaten by Aiden Aiden Gillen, my little finger of all people. Little finger, by himself. Maya Carcetti. Mayor Carcetti. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not... um, to be fair. John Cena keeps on like checking on his wife, or his, on his girlfriend, on like. And he's been like going. shot a few times throughout this movie, so it's like okay, like, I guess he needs he can take up a little bit in this scenario. But he manages to gain the upper hand and just pummel Carcetti's face into the bottom of the helicopter. Uh, but then he still has the bomb, and he's and he detonates it. He, he activates it, so they've got thirty seconds to jump off. Actually, when, when when the bomb is strapped to Molly and he's like, in in ten seconds a nail will go through her heart. I'm aiming for the right atrium, but we'll see what happens. Great villain line. Really like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, like so that. when when he he does when he triggers bomb, we get the little nail sound. We don't see the nail, but we hear the sound of it going shink, and then thirty seconds before it's going to explode. Uh, so they <laughs> uh, Molly kicks him in the face and says, "You've had it, bitch." Um, and then. <laughs> They have a very uh, other guys aim for the bushes kind of moment, of mm-hmm. leaping out of the helicopter and landing in the pool, conveniently placed directly below the helicopter on top of a hotel. And they land in it. It works. Success. Implausible. Ridiculous. Nonsense. I love it. Uh, just <laughs> unscathed. unscathed. They are just in that pool. It is entirely it entirely works. Yeah, it's a clean jump. <laughs> they land in the middle. No, no problems at all. They're in, they're done. It's only, it's only actually when they get out of that that John Cena starts like limping. Going, oh, my God, everything hurts. It's like, yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, because I, I, yeah, I call him the light as they said. It's like, what hurts? It's like everything. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I thought the, the adrenaline is first finally like caught up with him from that solid day of like he didn't stretch before running for three hours. Like that, just that alone, let alone being shot and. Uh, breaking out of an elevator, jumping out of a helicopter, everything else that he's been through, like climbing top of a moving trolley, driving mm. into a, a transformer and leaping out of a moving car. This is all 
things that are gonna hurt. And they finally <laughs> they finally catch up with him. And Molly's like, like, let's get you home. And then last line of the film. Ah, 